Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Morning. Hi, Dan. Everyone. I am glad you're all here. Uh, let's see, you got to get all, all the screens set up. Yeah, That's right. right here. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, before we before start, we start, I want I to. Want to I'm, I'm getting feedback. Yeah, yeah, we had a lot of feedback done. Testing. How? Okay. All right. Uh, I wanted to uh, address a uh, incident that happened on the on the site uh, last weekend. I was not around last weekend. Apparently, there uh, for the first time in 15 years, I have had trolls and bullies on my site, and these are people that I thought were my friends. So. Um, I think it I think it hurt the site. I think I watched a lot of people leave because of these two individuals and I apologize for that. I and I would say to any of you, if that ever happens again to anybody, that's not how my forums work. I've never had that problem on my sites. Uh Lael's here, he's been in Project 52, can tell you we just we just don't. So I was quite shocked um uh, by that by that, but uh we won't let that happen again. Apologies for me. All right. Up first is, uh, I really, is Phyllis here? Yes. I really, Phyllis, I really like this shot. I like the, I like the idea of you've, you've like, you've been eating the chocolate and they're just sort of disappearing. Are you there, Phyllis? You have to unmute yourself if you're there. Phyllis, no? Yeah, uh, can you hear me? Yeah, now I can. Okay, sorry about that. Okay, um, now the question I have, and I, lo I love your, this is, uh, this looks like chocolate powder. Is this, is this? Yeah, actually... it's cocoa, cocoa. Okay. Cocoa, uh, I, I like this, uh, this approach to it here. The question mm -hmm. I have for you is what lens did you use? Ooh, uh, hang on a second. It was the 18, 18, 18, to, 18 to 150. Okay. And do you remember where in that Zoom range you were? Um, no, I'm sorry. I don't. Okay. See, I think you're out a little too wide. Do you see how mm -hmm. this is going down here? It's, this, it's being pulled into the corners. Right. Um, and then it, it almost has like a, like a hump on it here. It's yeah. pushing these down and those up. And I think it's too wide. I think you needed to be higher up with a little bit more out. A 50 millimeter would probably be fine for this all the way up to 100 millimeters or 85. Um, okay. So a little bit higher. I think you were too close for it. Okay. Um, and the other, the other thing, when you're shooting this chocolate, um, and you, you, chose, you chose chocolate, and uh, I should have... I. Now I realize probably should have said don't do chocolate unless you've done chocolate before. But see all the little the little problems here. Yeah, all of that, all of that has to be touched out. Yeah, actually, on another photo I did work on, and I don't know why this one came up in the site, but I did go back and I spent oh, good. hours, you know, going back and taking that was within the chocolate as opposed to the glare. I even took the glare out of the center one on the top. You know, there's a hot spot. Right there, yes. Yeah, I took yeah. that out, and I don't know why this photo is coming up, and why the improved one didn't. But I, yeah, one of one of the other members mentioned that. I think it was Andrea, and I did go back and work on it. So, yeah, my apologies. the The easiest way to fix chocolate is the um, um, <laughs> frequency separation. Mm -hmm. Um. I, I think I linked to, I think on the page, it's linked to a frequency separation where you can actually download the, the action to make the separate, the different folders that you need. Um, but that'll clean this up very, very easy and very fast as well. Mm -hmm. But uh, I'd love this idea. I'd love to see the one that you fixed. Okay. Okay. 
Yep. So, so if it's on Facebook, just tag me, okay? Okay. All right. Don, can I ask a question about the frequency separation? Yes. Um, for the life of me, I've watched Pix and Perfect. I've watched Flurn. I've watched everything. And there's still things about it I just don't get. It's, Any chance at some point in the future we could do a one-day seminar on that? Yes. But but I want you to go. One of the things that's, that's challenging about it is setting up the two folders, right? And the, yep. you have to have a layer that inverts and a layer that, you know, whatever that other thing is, right? Yeah. The one that's got a picture of a watch, the YouTube that's got a picture of a watch actually has a link to a downloadable action that will make that for you. And so okay. you're, you're covered that way. Um, but yeah, we should go over it. It is a little bit, maybe we should just do it in, you know, almost like still frames, you know, do this then do this. Uh, because it it square it messes me up every time I go to do it. That's why I love this action. I'm like, oh yeah, this this is it. <laughs> I don't have to think about it. Um, but it's pretty simple. It's pretty simple once you understand it. And once you build one, you kind of go, okay, okay, we got it. Yeah, we'll do it, Mark. Thanks, Tom. Certainly. Ah, this is why that little hot light, that hot spot's showing up there, Phyllis. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yep, yep. Probably would have been better to somehow put a piece of tracing paper in front of it. Oh, thank you for the suggestion. Yeah, that would just sort of make yeah. this little bitty light a big square light and give you better fill in here. Thank you. Uh-huh. All right, very good. Very good. Ron. Morning. Well, this is a very, very nice uh, M&M shot. And uh, the reflection in the in the silver bowl is cool. The M&Ms are, I, uh, how did you uh, retouch them? Because they are absolutely perfect. Well, <laughs> and it wasn't just the M&Ms. It was, it was the black plexi too. That, uh, there was no way I could get all the dust yep. specks off. Yeah. But I started with the... Uh, dust and scratches okay. filter in yeah. the noise and uh, that that took care of a lot of it and um and then i just uh zoomed it to 100 percent and went around and spent you know a good bit of time um you know dabbing with the um with the um healing uh, healing brush right yeah the uh, yes exactly yeah you know the yeah. spot healing brush um and then I took it to Topaz and I ran it a couple of things there and um, and it just seemed to kind of come together. So I'm, yeah, I was quite pleased. I was, I was going to ask you about that because, you know, usually when you use the dust and scratch filter, it kind of softens the image. And well, unfortunately, it was, to me, it was a little brassy anyway, so I didn't mind that. <laughs> right. But when you put it back through Topaz, Topaz then sharpens it again. Well, yes, true, true. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's very cool. And it looks focus stacked. Am I right? It is. Yeah, there's yeah. about five, I think, five images. Yeah. Yeah. And so the whole the overall shot comes off as being something that it's you know, we just don't see it this way very often. Um we're we're used to that shallow depth of field. We won't be five years from now, we won't. Well, our brains will be used to focus stacking. But mm -hmm. you know, when I first looked at it, I went, that's focus stack. I love it because that guy's just as sharp as that guy. And all of us know, uh, I'm gonna say, is this a 50 or a 70 or where are you? In the um uh, it's not it, I have it on the um on the behind the scenes. I I, I was using a zoom, but I and I, I forgot what I was at. Um maybe 120. Click click over to the behind the scenes and uh uh, yeah, okay, 100 so 120 millimeters. So you're out yeah. there quite a bit. So that's why it took five. You had you're quite a bit. Yes, yes. I could total. have done it in one if I was in closer, but I liked the um, the compression that the uh, yeah the gave. Yeah, very. That's really really nice. And that focus stacking. That's what tends to throw me when I'm trying to guess the lens. You know, I just kind of like all of a sudden it's a little bit tougher to do. 
I love the little reflection, the circle coming back in here. That's very cool. Well, I learned that from you. I, <laughs> I made sure that happened. So. And uh, we don't even have to talk about the horizon. It's a gr really good shot, Ron. The color is vibrant as hell. Um, and, uh, and again, I think this would make a hell of a big, big print. Just an astonishing big print. I think so. Yeah, I'm, I, I plan on doing that. It's, um, I'm, I'm well pleased. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, I'm not a big one for the metal prints. I don't do people on metal at all. I think it's garish. But this could be one of those times when the metal print would just really just make it, a, you know, pop. Mm -hmm. Yeah, really cool. Good job. Great. Thank you. I had to do it over again. I would erase that scrim up. I think I had it. Um, the, the, um, the reflections on the candies were, were a little bit bigger than I would have preferred. But uh, That's actually what I like about it. Okay. Well, yeah, it's actually what I like about it. Great big highlights. That, again, that's something we don't see. It's a, the natural thing would be to see small highlights because they are small. Uh, no, it's the first thing I that I went for was big light right down on top of it. Yeah. Well, I'm fine. I with, love I that like, shot. I like that look. Oh, thanks. thanks. It's a beautiful shot, Ron. Thank yeah. you so much. Thanks. Great stuff. Fantastic. All right, Thomas. Oh, that's cool, Thomas. Yeah, I tried something very extreme, uh, black subject on black background. Yeah. And that together with a Frankenstein construction of a lens setup. <laughs> Yeah, because I, I use the medium format uh, or, or uh, uh, an, an, a lens from a field camera, mm -hmm. put it on a bellows device so that I could make an extreme tilt and uh, do it all in one shot. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, is there, they make a mechanism to put your no, I used a body cap, plastic cap, uh -huh. made, made a hole in it and fixed this uh, lens to it. Half of the lens is in the bellows and half of it is on the front. <laughs> <laughs> wow, cool. <laughs> That's great. That's great. You can all see what he's talking about, right? You see the back plane of the camera this way, but the plane of his focus is this way, which is the same as this. That's called tilt. Or to tilt shift lenses. This is a tilt lens, homemade tilt lens. Well, not the lens, the, the apparatus to hold it. And it gives him without focus stacking all the way through. Um, you know, usually, uh, usually I'm not a big fan of front lighting, but this is those, this is that case where it just totally makes sense. You're popping those highlights right off that front light. This guy right here. That's very, so they look, they look like metal, but they're licorice. Yep. That's cool. Now that, that we have just discussed the photo of the M&Ms, um, I wonder if my ratio of the two light sources uh, is too extreme. No, the, the perfect. perfect. If this gets in, as a matter of fact, I was just going to say, see the grays in here? Let's pull them up a little bit because when you look at the shot and you squint, you go to this hole, black hole over here. See, bring those up just a little bit, that shadow detail. No, 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 you, the, the whole idea of this is contrast, is to put that bright highlight on that negative color, it's black. It has no color. It's just, you know, a thing and you've made it perfect. I might actually tell you to bring these up just a little bit as well. A little sparkle on it. So these are actually being, these guys are actually being lit by your white card in the back, angle of incidence, angle of reflection. Did you think about putting another light into the back? 
No, I uh, use these black cards to to uh, get more differentiation into this uh, scrim mm -hmm. in the back. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, maybe I should have worked a little longer. <laughs> No, 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 no. I just, I just think that maybe we just pull these little highlights up a little bit right in here and right in here, and you're going to have your shot. And the shot as it is, is really, really good. Uh, it's so unique. Uh, and this, it has that, uh, that wonderful ability to make us question what we're looking at. It's like you first look at it and you think, what are, you know, they look like development reels from a 220 camera, right? Um, I wonder if you could use them for that. No, probably not. Uh, but that, they're cool. That's cool. Very nice. Thank you. It's very nice. And uh, you, you guys who are able to like build stuff, do it yourself stuff. You, you just piss me off. I, I can't. That was I, fun. I can't cut a square out of a piece of cardboard. So. <laughs> I need I need people around me like you. Very good. That's great. And where is my Sophie? Sophie, Sophie, Sophie. Sophie's not here yet. We're gonna go buy Sophie's. We'll come back. Uh, in fact, Mark, don't let me leave without talking about Sophie. Okay. Yes. All right. This is uh, uh, quite a construction, Mark. You know, I, I when I first thought of it, I thought great. Then I realized those gummies. Yeah. Um, I kind of struggle with it a bit, Don. Uh, I, the, why now? Because of the gummies? Yeah, trying to make that work. I was initially going to do something with the gummies along the line of what Elona did. Yeah. And I wasn't happy with the composition I was getting. So I thought, okay, I bought this cauldron at the same time. And I thought, okay, let's make this work. Then I thought, let's try and get the gummies into it. And yeah, I'm kind of going, eh, I don't know. I'm with you. I don't know. It's it's kind of a jumble. Yes, um, that's what bothers me about it. We have all the color at the bottom. Then when we get to the top, you know, a half of the top is just brown and white. Chocolate, yeah. chocolate and white. And I think we lost, I think you'd have been better off filling the cauldron with gummies yeah keep that color going yeah that's what that's what it's almost like there's two photographs photograph yeah. at the top and a photograph at the bottom yeah fair enough well don yeah. you know what i if i if i knew everything i wouldn't take this class and i was hoping that i get feedback like this that's good if i knew everything i wouldn't teach it <laughs> Very well, nice. thanks, Don. I appreciate the idea because you confirmed what I was thinking. Yep. Yep. You got two shots going on there. Very good. And Marjolein. Marjolein's not here either. Really? Okay. Well, give her a chance to catch up here. Andrea. Is Andrea not here? Oh, my goodness. A lot of people not here. Rainy's here. I'm here. <laughs> you built a tower, a tower of lifesavers. Yes. Cool. What hey. is your, what is your light? Oh, you're just lighting them with a the speed light from the back. Yep. So a little bit of a hard light. Yep. And then I had a white, um, a white card on the right. I don't think I had it in my behind the scenes. Oh. I probably took it out at that point. You put but... a white card over here? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just to kind of bounce some light back yeah, out of that. We can, see, we can see that. It gives us, a, we, we, we know they're round because of this. Mm -hmm. So the highlight in that, that thing, making it round, that, that looks good. The only, the only thing, Rainy, when you're, and this is the hard part of doing this shot. This is the detail. This is not lining up with this. This one doesn't come close. This is farther away than that one. If you're going, oh, okay, to, yeah, yeah. If I, you're going I to purposely them, wanted to make them separate, like moved away from each other. Ah, but, um, okay. Yeah, I did because I I tried them like two 
perfect stacks. And it just wasn't that interesting. So then I just like started moving one and then move another one, then move another right. one, then move another one. <laughs> right. If I had been on the set with you, I would have said the same thing. I don't want them to look like you shot one in Photoshop, reversed it and stuck it in there, right? Right. Uh, now they wouldn't look like that way anyway, because you have light that's coming from one side rather than the other. So if we flipped one, it would look really wrong. Look like you had lighting on both sides. Yeah. So what I would have said is, Let's change it up, but let's only change one thing. And probably that top one have one like sliding off a little bit more. Okay. Because when they are, when they're all, because every one of them is wrong, then it looks sloppy. Right. And I know you're not, you're not a sloppy photographer. You, these, these are choices you made. And I, I just think they were the wrong ones for that very reason. We want okay. to have it, um, you know, if they're, if they're paying you that kind of money, you know, shoot this shot, you want to just have it be so perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I like your outline. Did you put anything on the flash or is that bare flash? No, that's bare flash. Wow. You're brave. <laughs> well, first of all, first of all, you still, you stacked uh, lifesavers. So there's bravery in that period. <laughs> <laughs> and then a bare speed light. So yeah. All right. Good. 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 Now here's the, here's the thing. You got a shot going here. Yeah. Now make it now make it perfect. Just yeah. Make it Just so that. Shore it up. Yep. Yeah. Um, and even if you had it like they were all they're all perfectly lined up, and then you had one like it was slipping off, like a little bit of, you know, are you gluing them together? No, they're just stacked. You can use museum putty. You can use, my favorite is beeswax, or mm -hmm. you can get dental wax that they use for braces. Mm -hmm. And it's real sticky. Put a little tiny dab in there, put them together. They're not going to move. Okay. They, I mean, they, you will really, really nail it with that. And I would, I would stick these, the ones on the bottom down as well, you know, so they're not going to move for you. Uh, beeswax, I don't know where to get dental wax, dental wax, but beeswax you can get at like Joann's or Hobby Lobby or whatever. They're not cheap, but a little tin this big will last you for 20 years. You just take it off and put it back. The reason I, I use beeswax is it doesn't leave any oil on the surface. Okay. So even if you put it on the plexi and you picked it off, you wouldn't see anything was there. Mm -hmm. All righty. Thank you. Yeah. Leo. Yes, sir. Yeah, really cool. How so, are, now, are these individually shot? Are they on wire or? So I've got them on some long, uh, like, uh, shish kebab sticks. And the reason that the um, the plates cut off on the right is because when I when I put the stick on, it ran right kind of on the corner of the plate. And I, I worked about four hours trying to fix that curve and couldn't ever do it. So I just cropped it out. Okay. Yeah, I would, I, yeah. This is always, it's always hard to figure out how to do these. I mean, some people use skewers and sticks and some people hang them by threads. I find that when you hang it by a thread, it never stops moving. Right. It's, you know, so it takes two threads to do it. You've got that and then you've got to, a way of holding them together, but um, very cool. They do they they do look like they're being dropped. Um, have you ever used what's it called? Um, um, motion blur. I have not. You think I should try it on this? I just I just wonder. And you don't do the whole thing. The key with motion blur is that you just you know you grab that part of it. Do the motion blur like you know back a little bit, not that okay. far. I thought it was a jerk of the mouse, but just back a little bit here. Um, and then blend these two edges together. So only okay. the back part is blurred, not the front part. Otherwise, the whole thing looks like it's out of focus. Right. So new layer, attach the blur, do the blend mode. Okay. The I'll give blend it a try. The mask. Yeah. Let's see what you yeah. Yeah, I learned that you don't put those, see that stick there? Don't put yeah. that stick so that it 
block touches. Steve on the curve. <laughs> yeah. 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 I probably would have I probably would have told you to put all the sticks coming from the top. That way they're all against this background. Right. Piece of cake to remove. Yeah. Um, when they come in from the side, they're going to have different highlights and things. And then you've got more of a gradient down here to deal with than you do up here. You can just grab that stick, you know, up here uh, yeah. and just take it out. Yeah. Just snatch it right out. Should, should go just fine. Uh, and your background is done in camera or is that Photoshop? No, that's just, uh, just in camera. Yeah. I got a, my, uh, Little speed light on the left is kind of highlighting it with the homemade snoot. Okay. And then the, uh, so I've got that one camera on the right was just, uh, I think I've got a 20% grid on it. And then the one on the left has the big snoot and it's highlighting the, the kind of the edges of the yeah. ones in flight. Yes. Yes. Um, what I would tell you to do today, I was the art director is to shoot it on orange like you did. Okay. Not worry about the background. And I'm saying today because I mean like literally today, a month ago, I probably wouldn't have said this because if I came to you and I said, uh, Lael, I want you to cut out every one of these little guys, you would have gone, yeah, no, <laughs> we're, we're not doing that. But now with the new Photoshop and Lightroom where you just paint it and it grabs every kernel of ice or, or um, of sugar, uh -huh. everything is perfectly masked. Then I would say, okay, let's shoot it on orange. So we've got that. Then let's move all this up to a new layer. And then we can apply the orange in the background with the spray, any way of spray we want. Right. And we could turn it to a brighter orange or a darker orange or whatever uh, uh, on our own this kind of spray background, there's no reason these days to not just do it in Photoshop. So your client, if you're doing it for client work, your client has access to any color they want. Right. Now, if they did blue, that's not gonna look right because the highlights coming back on these reflections and things, gonna be a little tough to pull off with the blue. Right. Um, yeah, very cool, man. Okay, well, I got some questions about the about the AI and the picking and stuff. I I shot uh, some beer this last week that I really yeah. like, and I put the gold card behind. The gold card is actually showing a little bit on the left, and I can't get this thing to I can't get the AI to pick the difference. It's too it's too similar, and so I'm having to go through and use a pen tool or the magnetic lasso to do it. You put the can you put the the gold card behind the beer. Right. To, so it'd go through the glass, you know, right. and highlight it. And so the beer and the gold card are very, are almost identical. And there's not enough contrast on the edge of the glass where that card is. To, oh, to I see. So the beer. card's sticking out. So you're Yeah, to, exactly. Oh, in that particular case, you probably pen tool it. Yeah, that's what I'm yep. having to do. Yeah, I'm not too good with the pen tool. So it's taking me a while. Yeah. Once you master it, you spend two hours with the pen tool. The whole thing is once you realize what the handles do, once your brain wraps around, you go, oh, you can stretch them out to get a finer curve. Once that happens, pen tool becomes your friend. Okay. Yeah. It's just, we don't know why, how those handles work. And at first we grab a handle and the thing goes like this, right? right. Yeah. yeah. You got to exactly. pull them up straight so that they're long. The longer the leverage you have, the smaller the motion you can use to to move it. So when they're real tight, when you make them, they're real tight and they just right. they, they just scramble. Thank you, Doug. Yeah, that's that should work. Okay. Thanks, Don. Yeah. Uh, the other thing, when you're doing that with the beer, so you got your beer and you got your gold card, right? Right. Right here. It's easy to do this. Uh, shoot the camera through it. You got your gold card probably leaning back like that leaning back so it's getting gold light on it, mm -hmm. right? Take a black card and just hold a black card right on both edges here. Oh, that'd be good. You know, just block it off. Uh, yeah. and, uh, it, it might be uh, an easier way to do it. And then you can just take out both of those things okay. with, your, with your shot. Yeah, sounds good. 
be done. I was looking on the Facebook thing and Sophie's post said that she won't be able to make the meeting, but she put all the information on her post. Okay. Let's see. Um, did she put it behind the scenes? No, she didn't do it behind the scenes. Okay. Uh, this is really pretty. So uh, I think you probably, uh, bear above flash. Okay, one bear cow on top of the other. So she's got one from the top and one from the side, right? And a card. That's really cool. And again, I love the fact that we make beautiful photographs with, you know, just a couple of cents worth of candy. Yeah. The whole point of this, of this class is that you can make great art out of stuff you don't have to spend a lot of money on. How fun. I love it. I love it. And did, let's see. Mario Lane didn't make it. Um, this is a, this is one where she's using the shallow depth of field to pull her eyes up to this cam this candy. Um, I think I think Mario Lane, you've got a lot of the same tonalities. And when you look at this, the cup is tending to disappear into the back. Okay it's this this part of the cup and that part of the back is a problem that's why i would probably put a highlight back there we have we have time i'll show you what i'm talking about there and the candies a little highlight here so i don't know what you're using for your light but i think this highlight can be bigger bigger bring this box or scrim in closer so we get a bigger sized highlight here on the candy and pop it. So let me put this into Photoshop quickly. Yeah, I think, um, let me share Photoshop, sorry. Yeah, you can see Photoshop's even going to have a hard time picking that up in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, first I'm going to try it because you never can tell, select, subject. Well, I'll be danged. I'll be dang, did Photoshop saw it. That's a little unusual. Um, did not see this candy over here. So what I'm gonna do is go, uh, I should have done the whole thing. In, but anyway, anyway. So this is a little bit brighter, hey baby. I'm gonna put a, a, a layer in between. It's grandkids day. Layer in between. <laughs> and then I'm gonna take my brush, real soft brush at 10%. Because all I'm gonna do is just gonna, I'm just gonna make a little bit of a spray back here, okay? Uh, I'm on this layer above the background behind the layer of the cup. And I'm gonna touch it once, twice, three times and the cup separates. I could go the other way. One, two, three. I could go the other way. She's okay. And darken it. But I think it looks better light than it does dark. Then on the candies themselves, new layer, new layer with the plus button, option key push down, Mode to soft light. Fill is checked. Fill with soft light neutral color. Back to the white on the brush. Brush is way too big. 10% still. Way too big. And I come in. I'm just going to like take the normal flow of the highlight. And just punch it once, twice, once, twice, once, twice, three times maybe there. A little bit on this side. It's going to add feeling of light coming through these edges of these candies here. 
just a little bit like that. Doesn't look like I did a whole lot until I turn it off. On, off, on, off. It pops the candy a little bit. We bring those highlights out. So that's something that could be done as well. So very cool. All I have right, to say, right. Don, I use that all the time, that trick that you showed. Yeah, I I do as well, Lil. I mean, it's... it's yeah, it's I learned it from you. Thanks. Now. Part of my process now is, is uh, you know, just, just making sure those highlights are where they need to be. And, you know, I have... Um, because when it back in the in the old days in the in the dark room, I burned and dodged all the time, you know, have a little stick with a round thing on it and you dodge in and burn in and hot deck doll. Anybody remember hot deck doll? Get the deck doll made with hot water and you'd take the print out of the regular deck doll and you'd take a little sponge with that hot deck doll and you could just rub it on places and it'd get a little darker, just a little bit darker. Potassium ferrocyanide. That was a great one because that's the one that said, you know how some bottles that say, they say, well, if, uh, if ingested, call the doctor. This one says, if ingested, call the coroner. So it was like, uh, <laughs> that was that was some really scary stuff. Well, all right, folks, thank you so much. Uh, I um, We lost a lot of people in the Saturday group, but that's all right. Next week is utensils, spatulas, whisks, jars you know pots and pans the 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 items built around food so that's where we're going any questions are you learning yes very much absolutely thank you thank you oh. all right well good everybody have a great rest of your weekend make lots of photographs and we'll see you next time take care you too. Bye. 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 Thanks, Bob.